So I wanted to start um, with one more thing before I forgot to go over before we move on to hearing. Uh, with dynamic equilibrium, which is looking at the angular he um, head movement, this is one of the reasons why people get car sick. Because when you're driving or when you're riding in a vehicle, you're still going to have movement of the endolymph uh, within your inner ear. However, if you're trying to do something like read a book or if you're sitting in the back seat staring at a video or a movie or the, just the back of the car seat, then your eyes are sending a message to your brain that you are still, while the endolymph um, within your dynamic equilibrium uh, receptors are going to be telling your brain that you're moving. moving. So it's going to be a mixture of these um, kind of confused signals that can sometimes lead to um, a feeling of nausea and getting sick. So now that we've finished talking about equilibrium, we'll move on to the organs of hearing. Um, so within the inner ear, uh, you have the organ of corti. And this is within the cochlea. Uh, also, just kind of like with equilibrium, you do have receptors that have hair cells that are going to be found on a um, on the basilar membrane. Remember, the base of something is going to be the bottom of it. Um, so it's uh, you have this gel-like tutorial membrane that's going to bend those hair cells, and then whenever those hair cells are bent, the cochlear nerve uh, will actually transmit an impulse to the auditory cortex um, on the temporal lobe of your brain. So this is looking at uh, the organ of corti. Um, right here you have the tectorial membrane and then these are going to be your receptor cells and whenever we zoom in in just a second you'll actually see the hairs that get bent. So this is a zoomed in a little bit. We have the tectorial membrane right here. And then, uh, so as the vibrations are transferred um, through the cochlea, through the liquid in the cochlea, then it will cause the tectorial membrane to move, therefore bending the hair cells. So how do we hear? Vibrations from sound waves are going to, of course, travel into your ear, travel through the auditory uh, canal, and um, the vibrations will be transferred through your middle ear and then into the inner ear um, by the states vibrating on the oval window. So those sound waves are actually going to move the tectorial membrane and bend the hair cells, which will trigger an action potential to start in the cochlear nerve. Uh, continued stimulation can actually lead to adaptation. So that's why sometimes if you are in a classroom and the air conditioner is kind of loud, if it stays the same all the time, then your brain will automatically adjust for it and it's almost like you don't even really realize it's there, even though the sound doesn't change. Until, of course, you bring attention to it, then you will actually notice the sounds again. So this is showing uh, the pathway of the vibration. So, of course, we have this guitar um, that's creating sound waves. So sound waves will travel through the external ear. Um, the pinna will help to funnel it through the auditory canal, vibrating the eardrum. Then we'll go ham hammer anvil stirrup, vibrating the oval window. Then you have fluids in the cochlear canals that are going to um, stimulate the organ of corti by moving that tectorial membrane. And this is showing right here. I forgot to put it on. Sorry, I forgot to put on um, the pen. So just follow the mouse on me. Which is now the book. So here we have the states, which are going to vibrate the oval window. So fluids within the cochlea will actually move. And that is what's going to cause um, the tectorial membranes to vibrate. All right, so that brings us to olfaction, which is gonna be our sense of smell. So your olfactory receptors are located in the roof of your uh, na nasal cavity. You do have neurons that have long cilia or little hairs. And just kind of like in your mouth, um, 
the chemicals that you're actually smelling for olfaction actually have to be dissolved in order for you to detect them. And that is why your nasal cavity is lined with mucus. It actually helps to dissolve those chemicals so you can detect them. And of course, the impulses are transmitted um, through the olfactory nerve, and we interpret smells um, in the cortex. So here we have, these are gonna be the olfactory receptor cells, and then these are gonna be the hairs or the cilia that are gonna be located within the mucus layer inside your nasal cavity. Now your nasal cavity is actually a lot larger than you might imagine. Usually we just think of right here within our nose area, but it actually is a much larger space than that. Uh, your sense of taste, uh, your taste buds um, are gonna be what house the receptor organs for taste. Um, you do have some taste buds that are on your tongue. Most of them are on your tongue. You also have some on the soft palate, which is gonna be up in the roof of your mouth towards the back. You push your tongue up and you feel the hard palate directly um, in the top of your mouth. And then if you push your tongue all the way back, you'll feel where the bone ends and may become soft. That is the soft palate. And then also within your cheeks, you have taste buds. So on the tongue, we have these different little projections or these little bumps called papillae. You have different types. Filiform papillae, uh, they're kind of sharp. They don't have any taste buds. The fungi form, oh, that misspelled. Papillae uh, are a little bit rounded and they have taste buds. And then your circumvallate papillae are large um, papillae that have taste buds. And um, the taste buds are actually, um, I think most people kind of think that the bumps on your tongue are taste buds. That's not the case. Those are the papillae. The taste buds are actually going to be found on the sides of the papillae, and they're very small. You cannot actually see them. So here we have the different um, papillae. So kind of zooming in, these towards the back, those bigger ones, are the circumvallate papillae. And if you zoom in on their side, that's where you'll actually see your taste buds. So your taste buds kind of look like uh, rosebuds or um, kind of like lilies. And then they also are going to have these little uh, hairs on the end, these microvilli, that are going to help to detect the chemicals um, within your foods that are dissolved in saliva. So your gustatory cells are what we call the cells that make up your taste buds. They do have those long hairs um, that are going to be stimulated by chemicals uh, in your saliva. And we already talked about that. So your gustatory cells, each of these individual cells in here are going to be gustatory cells that make up your actual taste buds. Um, so your impulses are going to be carried um, to your brain to process the taste depending on, um, it's going to be different nerves depending on the area of those taste buds. Some of them will travel along the facial nerve, some along the glossopharyngeal nerve. Remember, glosso actually means tongue. And then some along the vagus nerve. A big difference between taste and smell is that taste you can actually only detect five different types of taste. We have sweet receptors that's going to taste things like sugars, so things like saccharin, and there's some amino acids that actually are sweet. Uh, your sour receptors um, are going to be detecting acids. Your bitter receptors are going to be detecting alkaloids, so those are your bases. Um, your salty receptors are going to be detecting metal ions. Um, and then umami is the fifth one. They used to always say there were four. Now they have actually considered umami receptors. Uh, this is kind of savory. So like steaks, um, Asian foods have a lot of uh, what they would consider savory flavors to them. Um, so these are actually the only things we can taste from our taste buds. Everything else that kind of we detect, things that are spicy, we don't have spicy taste um, receptors, that's actually um, things that are in your foods that are causing pain within your mouth and that's what causes the spicy sensation. So looking at um, both of your chemical senses, taste and smell, they both do use chemical receptors or chemoreceptors. So the chemicals have to be dissolved in a solution. 
And as far as taste, it's going to be dissolved in saliva. In your nose with smell, it's going to be dissolved in mucus. Um, now, oh, there's a mistake. So taste, it says, has four types of receptors. Now, we say that there are five types of receptors. While smell can actually differentiate a very large range of chemicals, which you all kind of found out uh, as you did your jelly bean um, demonstration in class. And so both senses do complement each other. Um, if you take away smell, your food is not going to taste as good. And also, if you take away um, your taste, your food isn't going to taste as good either. So it's going to be a mixture of those things that give us the depth of flavor within our foods. Um, but the majority of what we actually consider taste or flavors actually is going to be determined by our smells.